Uh, what are the advantages? Well, obviously, the biggest advantage is going to be sales, a lot of sales. Whether you go on the corporate level with the core list, that's going to be tremendous amounts of sales. There you have to watch out. Again, make sure you have enough product. We have 70 locations. Our best-selling products, we move about upwards of five to 10 cases of a bottle of wine. Could be every twice a week we might be ordering that. If you don't have enough product, please don't propose that particular wine. On the flip side of that, we have placements that might be a little too low end and not the right fit for our chain. So that's something to keep in mind too because you want to be represented well. You want your team to be represented well. You want to walk into the store level with your sales force and them say, oh my God, I love your wine. I can't believe it, what else do you have? And they'll get excited to put more of your wines on their list, even though they're not core wines, because they love your core wine so much. At the same token, I've had wines I've put on the wine list that are not core wines that I've loved personally. And we had a wine director that used to be with us at our corporate office who said, these wines are fantastic, and I introduced him to them and they are now core wines at the restaurant. So you can start at a store level and that in turn become a core wine from that approach as well. There's just different ways to go about it. You have to just have a plan of how you want to approach it and then use those guidelines to get there, to achieve your goals. Having a placement also gives you leverage. The leverage on two levels, you can go to other accounts and say, hey, I'm with Capital Grill. I have a core wine, or I have a wine at these five locations. The advantage to that is that wine is now in our computer database. Any of our chain can now put that wine on their wine list without waiting for approval. It is automatic. If they like the wine, click, it's on their list. That's how fast it can go if it's in the computer. If it's not in the computer and we have to put it on, it's going to be a waiting period, which can be anywhere from a month to unfortunately upwards of six to eight months to get it approved to be on our wine list, at which point the vintage has probably changed, so we have to try it again. But at least the wine, if it's approved, though it's a vintage change, it's now still on our list. Which brings me to consistency, which we'll talk about in a minute. The other advantage, exposure, our press. We do a lot of advertising, both with social media, through the internet, all over the place. Um, if you're a product that we're selling, you are piggybacking on our advertising and our promotions that we do. So it's a very, very good marriage. If it's a good product, and a good relationship, it can go for a very long time with us. We have wines and liquors that we've been selling for decades with our company. So it's a really a long relationship that it's worth developing, I think, because we're not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm having clicker issues. Uh, disadvantages. Um, this is a tough one. I was doing a promotion, corporate-wide promotion, a few years ago with a very small, high-end winery. Midway through the promotion, they ran out of wine. And we were, every single location, and we have about 70, we were struggling to find adequate substitutions of this wine that they were out of to finish our promotion that had already been advertised all over the place. It was a very difficult situation for each of us to be able to get through the promotion finding substitute product. So just make sure if you're proposing a product to us that the supply I love it. That the supply matches the demand of that product. Needless to say, we don't sell their wine anymore. 
The other thing that is good with liquor, oh, he warned me about that. Ah. The other thing oh, that you can do with liquor is we've had, if you have brand ambassadors, have them come to the restaurant level and bring a bottle. Get to know the staff, get to know the wine directors and the salespeople that purchase the liquor or beers for that company and taste them on your product. Educate them on your product and maybe leave a bottle there for them to give to their regulars. If the regular customers start recommending, requesting that product, guess what? That rep is, the director is going to buy some of that product and put it on their back bar. People will see it and they'll start asking for it and then we'll start buying cases of it. And then we see 10 other Capital Grills start selling it also. And next thing you know, it's a corporate mandated liquor that we sell now. So you can also do it with liquor the same as you do with wine. It's just introducing it, standing by it, having a support team to sell it, and then it will be sold, and then it will be ordered regularly. The wrong placement. This is, this is tough because make sure before you approach the chain, um, if it's a high-end chain or even for a casual chain at that, make sure that what you're proposing is a consistent product. We've had issues with bottle variations, vintage variations, that you might taste an incredible, dry, beautiful cab, and then you order a case, and it's this fruity, sometimes damaged and faulted product that is not consistent with what you've tried. Or you order a couple of cases, and by the third or fourth case, the wine starts having variance issues. So that's going to reflect badly on whoever gave us that product. So please keep in mind who you're representing and sub submit products that have a solid reputation. 